Praise the Lord. Um, I'm excited this morning. Uh, we are looking at a, a very interesting topic, and uh, today we're going to speak about um, the man, William Branham. And I specifically want to speak about the man because um, if you go and you do some research on him, you will see that there's a lot of controversial um, issues around this man being a false prophet, many people saying many things about him. And I want to just say to you where I come in and what God's purpose is with me and, and why I do speak about William Branham. Let's pray and then um, we can start. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, that your spirit knows all things. We thank you, Lord, that nothing is hidden from you. Lord, thank you, Father, that you're a gracious God. And thank you that you want to put together a puzzle that we can understand the fullness of everything, Lord, that you've given us for the sake of the gospel, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you want to restore the power of the gospel in, the, in these last days to the full extent of what the apostles and the prophets had in the first century. And I pray, Father, that even those that's going to listen today, that they will be empowered that they will um, be able to be inspired and that they will get to know Jesus Christ in a more deeper and a more intimate way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, the man William Branham has been a, a very controversial person. Uh, a lot of people really believe that he, uh, he, he completely went off the tracks. And so there was a book written by uh, Robert Lydon, uh, God's Generals. And in this book, basically the book speaks about the successes of these men from the point of view of their healing ministry and also their failures and where they made a mistake, according to um, the understanding of Robert Lydon and what people now understand. But myself... All I did, God called me to be a witness of the truth. And every time that the Holy Spirit confirms God's word, God wants to say something. God wants to reveal something. Um, we always need to test everything. You know, when, when we uh, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, it says here, Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophesying, prove all things, and hold fast to the good. So in the Amplified, it actually says the following. It says, do not quench or sup suppress or subdue the Holy Spirit. So, you know, when the Holy Spirit wants to reveal things to us, we need to be open. We need to be like children that are ready to learn. Sometimes God will take us to the next level. God wants to reveal mysteries to us. And we need to be open, but we need to test all things. Verse 20 says, Do not spurn the gifts and the utterances of the prophets. Do not despise prophetic revelation. And do not despise inspired instruction or exhaustion or warning. But test and prove all things until you can recognize what is good and to that hold fast. So I'm not saying you need to believe me. I'm going to just give you a witness. I'm going to give you a testimony that I believe is going to glorify God. It's going to open up the scriptures. It's going to begin to reveal to you a, a deeper layer of how God works and what is possible and to know Jesus Christ, to know him personally in a more deeper, in a, in a more intimate way. That, that's my purpose with this whole revelation that I want to give you today. Hallelujah. So I, I hope that you are excited to come and learn more. <clears throat> and, you know, we need to test prophecy. We need to test all things. Um, we cannot just believe everybody. And there's nothing wrong in testing anybody who says that they are prophesying and they are hearing something from God. You are allowed to test them. It's important to test them. And we need to grow in our discernment in order to, to really know what God is saying. But sometimes God wants to give revelation. I believe most of what God wants to do is He wants to restore things that got lost. 
even things that got obscured. Um, you know, all our translations, even our Bible translations that we have, they have been translating things from Greek and even from Latin over into English. And the Greek language is a very strong language. It's much stronger than English. And in translating it, we actually can obscure the full understanding of the meaning of a certain Greek or even Hebrew word for that matter. And when the Holy Spirit, many years ago, I was praying one day and the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, you know why Hebrew is such a strong language? Because Hebrew is actually a picture language. Um, there's a lot of pictures in the, the old Paleo Hebrew and when God wants to get across a message, he gives us a picture. You know, there's a, a saying that says a picture speaks uh, a thousand words. And so literally, there's a thousand words in a picture that's far greater in its volume than just writing a little word for a picture. And so I believe there's a lot of things that got lost. There's a depth in the Word of God that we do not understand. Most who try to understand Hebrew, you know, I've got the Strong's Bible. And it's a very good Bible. Um, if you use Esword and other translations, you can have the Strong's included. And that gives you a deeper understanding of the Hebrew and the Greek. And if you are a Bible scholar and if you want to go deeper and you want to study the, uh, the meaning of the word and even the breakup of the root word, that's a very good um, way to go and to really get to know your Bible and get to study things on a deeper level. I love that. But what, what I want to say this is Ephesians 1 verse 16, Paul says, I pray that you will have a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him. And so God wants to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation to know mysteries and secrets and understand deeper things that got obscured. God doesn't want to reveal new things. There's nothing new under the sun, actually, Ecclesiastes says. But God wants to um, reveal what got obscured, that people did not understand these mysteries anymore. Um, and so if we go and look at, you know, many people might say, well, maybe a person is a false prophet. Let's just look at the definition of a false prophet. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1, there's this amazing and a very challenging passage of Scripture that speaks about how to test a prophet. And it says, If a prophet arise among you, or a dreamer of dreams, who gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder that he foretells you comes to pass. And if he says, Let us go after other gods, gods that you've not known, and serve them, you shall not listen to the words of the prophet or to the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind and heart, and with your entire being. So what is amazing here is God is telling us, you need to test. God is testing us to see if we will really follow his word. And he says there could even come a prophet, a prophetic person, who can even prophesy accurately and what he says will come to pass. It's not even saying it will not come to pass. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we, we test prophets because what they say does not come to pass. There is a verse that says, if what they say does not come to pass, we know that it was not from God. But here it says it actually comes to pass. But the real secret lies in the fact that it says, let us go after other gods, gods that you've not known, and let us serve them. You know, if I begin to preach something that you might begin to serve other gods, it actually is a false doctrine or it's a false teaching that turns you away to another god. And, you know, if a person is still learning to grow in the prophetic, especially in the New Testament, the prophetic is much different, very different from the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the prophet was the voice of God, and it was between God and man. But in the New Testament, all Christians that have the Holy Spirit on the inside of them are actually prophetic. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men 
will uh, see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Both of my men servants and my maid servants I'll pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. So God has given his spirit to everybody and everybody has the ability to see visions. Everybody has the ability to dream dreams. There's a lot of people that believe that those things have passed away, but you know, it's never passed away. God still wants to speak to us. But we need to test and we need to look through the right perspective and become mature spiritually in what we are hearing from the Lord. And so I just wanted to talk to you about that so that you will know what is the real definition of a false prophet. Um, there's another verse here in 2 Corinthians 11 from verse 1 which Paul is talking to the Corinthians and Paul is very concerned when he speaks to the Corinthians and he says, I wish that you would bear with me a while and indulge in a little of my so-called foolishness. Do bear with me, for I am zealous for you with a godly eagerness and a divine jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But now I am fearful lest that at even like the serpent beguiled Eve by his cunning, so your minds may be corrupted and seduced from wholehearted and sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So Paul is saying that there are people that got beguiled, they, be, they got deceived, just like Eve was deceived. We've spoken a lot about how Satan has deceived mankind right in the beginning in the garden getting them to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There's your biggest deception. If you can sort that one out, you've already sorted out 50% of your problems already. So he says, I don't want you to be beguiled like Eve was. He says here in verse 4, For you seem readily to endure it if a man comes and preaches to you another Jesus that one, than the one that we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one spirit whom you have received or a different gospel from the one that you received or welcomed you tolerate that all enough so paul is talking about three aspects of really that we need to test he's talking about the fact that you could have preached a false jesus which is not really jesus it's it's not the character of jesus it's not really the the character of god you could be preaching a false gospel, which is not really the truth that sets you free. It's not the gospel because the Bible says that the cross is enough. Anything that's the cross and something, then it means you're already missing the point. Paul says in uh, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3, I think he says, I want to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. So it's all about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. So, and then he says, they can also maybe preach a different spirit. Now, there was quite an amazing example that I've given you in the past where it was um, James and John. They wanted to call down fire on the town of, um, I think it was Capernaum, and they wanted to burn up this place. And Jesus says, you do not know what spirit you are. You know, the kind of spirit you are is the spirit, the attitude that you have. Do you have an attitude of love or do you have an attitude of condemnation? Are you out to find fault or are you actually gracious and learning and walking in God's love? You know, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. And so when we walk already in God's love, We've already won the other 50%. Hallelujah. And so we really do need to test all spirits. In 1 John 4, verse 1 to 3, John is saying this. He says, Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove and test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you may know and perceive and recognize the Spirit of God, because every spirit which acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, actually has become a man 
and has come in the flesh is of God and has God for its source. So John is making a, giving you a little test here. He says, if somebody acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that Jesus Christ died and that he was a man, then you will know that he's the son of God. And if you believe that, he says you already can actually know that this person is from God. Now, there's a lot of different things that people say, but most people believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And John is saying we need to test the spirits. We need to test people that say, well, this is the Holy Spirit. Now, what I've seen is Jesus makes an amazing statement. He says, I'm going to leave you now, and I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit that will guide you and lead you into all truth. Now, can you imagine this? Jesus actually says, it's good that I go away, because if I go away, He, the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, must come, and He will guide you and lead you and teach you all truth. Can you imagine that Jesus did not teach them everything, and that the Holy Spirit was going to come and confirm things, and come and bring them deeper revelation of the truth? Hallelujah. You know, I never understood that, but I, I found that out a few years ago, that Jesus came to finish the Old Covenant, and when He finished the Old Covenant, He came to usher in the New. But what is true is the Holy Spirit had to really reinforce the New and really begin to convict the hearts of men regards sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. So the Holy Spirit was the one that came to convict us of the finished work of Christ. The Holy Spirit was the one that says, listen, if you believe in Jesus, you can get your sins washed away. He convicts us regards righteousness. Why? Because he says, I'm going to my Father and I've made a way for you so that you would not be cut off from God anymore. And then he says, regards judgment because the prince of this world is already judged. Not regards judgment because you are judged or God's going to judge you. It's talking about the prince of this world that's already judged. Hallelujah. And so the Holy Spirit's purpose is really to guide us. And we need to know how we can allow God's Spirit to teach us and guide us into all truth. And uh, verse 3, he says, Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, but would annul and destroy and disunite himself from God, does not, prove from, does not proceed from God. This non-confession is the spirit of the Antichrist of which you have heard that is coming and is now already in the world. You know, so many people are waiting for the Antichrist to come, but John is saying that if you do not acknowledge Jesus Christ, Antichrist means in the place of Christ, something that replaces Christ. And Paul is saying, test them to see if they acknowledge that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and that they actually do proceed from God. Do they proceed from the, the real character of God? Amen. Coming back to, to William Branham now. You know, most things that were said about William Branham, he never said. He never said those things about himself. It was some of his followers that later came that idolized him, misinterpreted him, and sometimes even misrepresented him, which he never said. And he never said that he was the second coming of Christ, for that matter, for those people who read things like that. He never said that he was um, actually the angel of the Lord or something like that. You know, people say a lot of things. We need to go back and do our research because if God really confirms something, he wants us to know something. We might miss something that God wants to reveal to us. I've got a saying over many years that has helped me to test things. You know, as we test things, we need to keep the, the fish and we need to spit out the bones. And often I've learned a lot from the fish, but I kept on spitting out bones. Hallelujah. And I've learned from a lot of people. You know, when you stay humble, you are able to learn. And don't be in fear because God can teach you a lot from someone else that does not think like you. We saw that earlier um, in another program where we spoke about um, the, the prophetic restoration in the last days. And there I actually spoke about 
Jesus making a statement that says, if you receive a prophet because he's a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. Now, if William Branham had received something from the Lord, if he did really walk in something and we don't receive what he had, and he had some amazing relationship with the Lord, then we're going to miss out. We're going to miss out on something. Yes, the rest of what he said, maybe. I, even I don't personally agree with everything that he said. He made some radical statements, which I really do not agree with. Um, he, he was very radical on, um, on some law things, which he said women cannot cut their hair. And there was a lot of things that came in in doctrines because they were very legalistic on the one side. And so those things I do not agree with. So I've learned from things that the Holy Spirit confirmed in me to show me things that are really going to open up the Bible. You know, the purpose why the Holy Spirit wants to open up things is to give us revelation. Let's just look at that verse again in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16. And Paul is making an amazing statement. I want to pray this for you before we're going to end off today. He says, I do not cease to give thanks to you, making mentioning of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, in the deep and the intimate knowledge of him. Hallelujah. So, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will, by His Holy Spirit, grant you a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of insight into mysteries and secrets, a, a, a spirit of revelation. You know, even Paul the Apostle, I'm thinking about, um, I think it is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, where Paul says, listen, I don't want to boast but if I have to go on to visions and dreams, then I'll tell you some of my experiences. And Paul was not much into his experiences, but he did share that one experience where he was caught up in heaven. He was caught up in paradise and he had seen things that was inexpressible. I believe those things doesn't only mean that he was not allowed to speak about them, but it means that they were inexpressible. They were hard to explain because things in the spiritual realm are sometimes hard to explain. In verse 18, he says, By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you, how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. Hallelujah. You see, God wants you to begin to understand the fullness in the future as the Holy Spirit leads me. Uh, I believe we're going to begin to look at the fullness of our identity of who we are. And all these things I'm giving you right now is just laying foundations that you can have a deeper understanding of the identity of who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. And Paul says this is the purpose of why God gives you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that your eyes of your heart can be flooded with light that you can understand the hope to which God has called you. You know, I, I really love experiencing God. I love experiencing the Spirit of God. Uh, God is real to me. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is real to me. His presence is special to me. And every time I have an encounter with the Lord, I have been changed every time. You know, when Moses was in God's presence, God said, Moses, take off your shoes because the place where you stand is holy ground. Why? Why did Moses have to take off his shoes? Because he was in the presence of a holy God. But something happens when you come into the presence of, a whole, of the holy God. Hallelujah. Your, your whole being, your spirit, your soul, everything gets influenced by the encounter that you have with God. One more thing I just felt the Holy Spirit said to me this. There are people that's going to maybe say, but Hendrik, you are talking about having encounters with, with Jesus and you are talking about having encounters with the angel of the Lord and all these things, those who had encounters with Jesus, they, they fell as dead. 
You know, sometimes Jesus revealed himself on a certain level to people and their fellows did. But sometimes Jesus revealed himself to Paul in the book of Acts. And he says, the Lord to my serve was standing next to me and spoke to me last night. And there was no falling it down and, and fearing Jesus. So it depends on the way that Jesus decides to reveal himself. I had many encounters with Jesus Christ. And every one of them was on different levels. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you that you will begin to go to a higher level and a deeper level of knowing Jesus Christ. Because that's what Paul says. I want to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that you will not be afraid. Um, in ending off, there's one more verse in Matthew 7 that we all know very well. In Matthew 7 from verse 15, Paul says the Paul Jesus says the following. He says, Beware of false prophets who come to you dressed as sheep, but inside they are devouring wolves. You will fully recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy and sound tree bears good fruit. We've looked at that teaching in the past. He says, but a sickly, decaying, worthless tree bears bad and worthless fruit. So in the past, we looked at the two trees and we saw that if you eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, even though it seems like you're producing good fruit, you're going to produce bad. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus says, do you think that a bad tree can actually produce something good? It can't. If the tree is already rooted in the wrong place, it's already the wrong kind of tree, you will produce something that is not going to be from God. It's going to be a different spirit. But if you have a good tree, he says a good tree can only produce good fruit. You know, the tree of life can only produce life. If you have a mindset of life and you take life out of the tree of life, you will get life. Hallelujah. There's a verse, in, a verse in the book of Proverbs that says, As a man think in his heart, so he will be. If you have negative, critical things, you are going to be critical. You're going to be sickly. You are always going to be judgmental and others are going to judge you. And so I want to pray for you that you will bear fruit, fruit that will truly be able to glorify God. Amen. And that you'll be able to test all things. Father, I thank you so much for today, Lord. Thank you that we can know, that we can test prophets, Lord. We can test spirits, Father. We can test gospels, Lord. We can test teachings, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will help us to grow in our discernment, even as we've looked at discernment in the past, that people will grow in discernment. And in that discerning place, they'll be able to discern between a false gospel and a true one. And they'll be able to discern between the true Jesus and a different Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I just sense God's presence right now. And God says, I am empowering you with my Holy Spirit. Because I am the counselor. I am the one that wants to teach you. I am the one that wants to guide you and lead you into all truth. And the more you open yourself up to God, the more He will take you on your journey that He is on with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Lord just speaks to me about people that had many memories of negative things and a lot of false things and fearful ideas of false prophets. That Even Jesus warns about false prophets. That's very true for the end times. Um, but sometimes people have missed things because they've not really tested by the Holy Spirit. So I feel like God says, do not be afraid. Don't operate from a spirit of fear, but rather from a spirit of love. Then you'll be able to discern. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can test all spirits. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that the spirit inside of us, Lord, will be able to recognize a different kind of spirit. And if, if there are people out there, Lord, that have somehow swallowed up, Lord, 
the bones with the fish, that I pray that you will begin to help them to see the bones from the fish in Jesus' name, Father. Yes, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. I just sense God is saying, just receive right now. Just receive a, another measure of oneness with Jesus so that you can discern in that place with the Holy Spirit just what is truth and what is false. Um, I'm reminded of the verse God gave me many years ago that says, I'll make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. The purpose of the threshing sledge was to separate the chaff from the wheat. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you want to separate the chaff from the wheat in our own hearts, in our doctrines, Lord, in all that we've learned in Jesus' name. And I want to end off with Paul's, the, the experience that the, the Bereans, that Paul had with the Bereans. And he says, they were of more noble character because they examined the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. And God says, you have a noble heart if you examine me. Hallelujah. And I'm open for examination. I'm open that you can come and talk and say, well, I don't agree with that. And let the Holy Spirit just work in you, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless. Thank you, Jesus.